Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my video. It's Goose coming at you with episode three of my Zellnode series. And in this episode, we're gonna be looking at how to register an application on Flux. If you remember the previous episodes, we went through how to set up a Zellnode, install the software on it, and connect it to your wallet. Now we're gonna be looking at how you can put your node to good use. And this is especially for developers, okay? So if you're a developer and you want to get a great deal on a certain amount of space on a VPS that you can make use of, this is a really cool opportunity because not only are you gonna be spending Zelle, which is an incredibly reasonably priced asset, you're also gonna be able to do it in a decentralized way. And what's really cool about Flux is the application specs are published on the blockchain. So all of the nodes have the same specs and the nodes can then spawn those applications accordingly, which is really cool. So for a global launch, for instance, you can go ahead and set that to launch and it will replicate itself five times across the network within a matter of minutes. Really cool stuff, guys. And what I like about this, in addition to that, is it's granular. So you can actually allocate how many resources you need for your application. So if you only need like 50% of one CPU, you can put that in. If you only need 500 megabytes of RAM, you can put that in. And you're only charged based on those specs. So the nice thing about this is you don't have to pay full price for a VPS. You just pay a little bit of Zelle on a monthly basis for running your application. And I think that people are really gonna love that because it's such a great value right now. Not only that, uh, when we look at the roadmap, this is a vision that started in 2018. And here we are just two years later and constant development, but now we're at version 1.0 of Flux. And what that means is this thing is ready to be unleashed on the masses. And I'm really excited to be able to show you this today. So let's get into how we get set up on Flux. Okay, to register a Zelle app on Flux, there's a few things we're gonna to need to do. First, we'll want to open up our Zelle Core wallet and log in. I've already done that here. Next, we're gonna to need to determine what type of resources we need for our particular application. Now, as a developer, you would have a better idea of what that is for your application than probably anybody else. But let's suppose you're just somebody who wants to install an application off a of Docker Hub. Well, you can probably find some information on the minimum requirements for that particular app, if not on Docker Hub, with a little bit more research. So in that case, search engines are your friend. Nevertheless, let's suppose you already know what type of resources you need. Well, now you basically have to figure out what node you want to put that app on. And by what node, I mean what type of node, right? Because as you remember, Zelle nodes have three different tiers, the basic, the super, and the BAMF. And depending on the amount of resources you need for your application, this will determine which type of node you want to install it on. So I already know what kind of app I'm gonna be installing and it doesn't require a whole lot of resources. So I can very easily get away with a basic node and that's gonna be fine for this example. But again, as a developer, you would know exactly what it is that you need. The next question we need to answer really is where do we want this node to be? Because uh, I'm on the East Coast of the United States and I don't wanna have all that many latency issues with accessing my app. So it's probably better for me to find a node that's near me, right? So there's a couple ways we can do this. The first would be to go to our dashboard and that is dashboard.zell.network. And this provides a map and all of the information um, on how many nodes we have and how many different tiers. You can see in the basic tier, there's 334 nodes which comprises about 40% of the network. And that's fine for what I'm looking for, but I really wanna find one that's right around that area there, that little green, and see if we can find one nearby. So I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom of this page here, and what you can do is use the all Zell node details list, and you can sort these by country. So I've sorted them by country, and I'm looking here at the US where I am, and there's a bunch of different states here which are on the East Coast, including New York, Georgia, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. So where is a basic node near me? Let's look at this New York one here. It looks like a basic. So what I would do is just copy this IP address right here 
and then you can open up a new tab, paste that, put a colon, and put the port number for flux, which is 16126, and hit enter, and that will take you to that particular Zell node. All right, this one is not on the latest version of flux, so do be aware you need to be on version 1.0, okay? Now, I have already prepared a node for my application here, so I'm gonna use that particular node, which is right here, and that one is already at version 1.0. Uh, by the time of global app launch, which is uh, around October 10th, all nodes will have a forced update to bring them up to version 1.0, so you won't have to worry about nodes that are uh, the incorrect version. In fact, if it's the incorrect version, you wouldn't even be able to register the app anyway. So for all intents and purposes, this demonstration is gonna show us using the proper version and process, okay? One other thing I do wanna mention before we get too ahead of ourselves is that if you're looking for a node and you have Zellcore Plus, there's a great way to find a node in Zellcore. Just click the apps button here, go to Zell nodes, and that will provide you a map. And what I really like about this is you don't have to go sifting through all kinds of charts and stuff. Hey, we can even filter this map. So I know I need a basic node, right? If I click on the tier here, go to basic, it'll filter out all the others and only show me the basics. And then I can zoom in on this particular map. All right, let's see. There's one over here near Washington DC. Now, if I click this little blue, all right, that's a basic and it tells me uh, some information about that particular node, including the flux version, see, version 1.0. Now, if I wanna just go to this particular one, all I gotta do is click on open flux and there it is. So this makes finding a node for yourself a lot easier, and it's all built within Zellcore. Just as a reminder, if you want to have access to those additional features in Zellcore Plus, all you need to do is stake 5,000 Zell in any one of your Zell wallets on Zellcore, and you'll be good to go as far as having access to Zellcore Plus. So really cool feature for those uh, who are supporting Zell. Now, getting back to the registration process, and let me go ahead and zoom in for you here. Now, to sign into Flux, all we have to do is click on the Zell ID button here, and that will take us to Zellcore. So go ahead and click this option to open up Zellcore. And now we have the option to sign and send. So we'll click on sign and send. Go back over here, and look at that. We're successfully logged in to Flux on this particular node. Now all that we have to do is figure out which app we're going to install, and I've already got one, which is Dibby Fetch. Dibby Fetch is a decentralized pricing oracle that literally goes out to multiple crypto exchanges and fetches the pricing data for all the coins listed there and acts as a pricing aggregate. So if somebody's looking to get average pricing on the same type of cryptocurrency among multiple exchanges, you could go ahead and use an API call, pull it right out of Dibby Fetch. So this could be a really cool feature for, I mean, I, multiple use cases, and it's gonna be exclusive to Flux running on our decentralized network. So I figured it'd be a really good example of an app that we can run. And it doesn't require a whole lot of resources, so it's perfect for a basic node. Now to install this on our Zell node, we go over here to Flux, and then let's go to Zell Apps and register Zell App. Great, now, gotta put some information in here, pretty basic stuff. First is a name, call it Dibby Fetch. Just a note here, no special characters, only letters or numbers. You can use upper or lower case, but that's it. As for the description, I'm gonna put test Dibby Fetch install. Now, the Docker Hub repo, we're going to need the name slash, the name of the repository, and its tag. So we're going to go back over here to Docker Hub and click on Tags. And we're going to get that right here where it says Docker Pool. And then we've got our name and then our repo name and then our tag. So this is the command you would run if you wanted to actually install this on a Linux box. But since we're not installing it on Linux box, we're putting it in flux. All we need is the name slash Dibby fetch colon 
latest. I'm going to copy that back to Flux and paste that here. Where it says owner, this already grabbed our Zell ID because that's what we use to log in. So it already knows that this is us. As for port number, we have to choose a port that is higher than 31,000. So in our case, let's go ahead and use 31,001. As for the environment, this, all you have to do is put an open and a close bracket. Same thing for commands because there, this is all taken care of by Flux when it installs the Docker. As for the container port, it says the port on which your container has, what, what they mean here is the port that you would use to normally access that container. Uh, so in our case, this is an app that runs over HTTP and the default port for HTTP would be 80. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. As for the folder that is shared, we're gonna use a temp folder. So I'll just put slash TMP. All that's left now is to input some of our resource requirements. So like I said, this doesn't require a whole lot of resources. In terms of CPU, I'm gonna put 0.2. As for RAM, this is in megabytes. I'm gonna use 200 for 200 megabytes. And then storage space, SSD in gigabytes would be just one, but if you need less, you can put 0.5 or 0.2, whatever works for you, all right? Now that we have that done, you do have an option to make it a tiered app. So if, for instance, you wanna run it on multiple tiers, you can go ahead and specify what those requirements should be for each tier. But I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this as a single tier on the basic node that I'm running. I'm gonna install it locally. Now that we have everything here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on compute registration message. If I scroll down a little bit, you can see here it's given us a registration message. And now all I gotta do is sign that with my Zell ID. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. Okay, now all I have to do is click sign and send. All right, message signed and sent. Go back over here to Flux. And we can see our signature has been placed here. And now I click on Register Zell App. All right, we've got a green confirmation here. And then at the bottom, it says, to finish registration, please do a transaction of three Zell, which is right here, three Zell, to this address with the following message. Okay, now this is what Zell ID makes really simple. All we gotta do is click on Pay with Zell Core. Once again, we'll open up Zellcore, all right? And now it says payment request for three Zell to this address was received. So let's proceed to pay. All right, and look at this. It even put the note here as it needs to be. All right, so let's go ahead and send that. There we go, transaction was sent. Great. There we go, and these transactions, they take about two minutes because every block is confirmed within two minutes, but uh, this may already say that it received it. Let's see. Transaction must be mined by the 21st of September, which is today at 1833. Uh, and it will be subscribed for one month. Okay, this is a price per month. So we got three Zell per month. Actually a very reasonable price if you consider how much Zell costs right now. <laughs> It's like next to nothing to run this particular app. Now, of course, if you need more resources, the price will be a little bit higher. Uh, it really just depends on you know how much CPU power and storage space you need. But that being said, um, all we gotta do is wait for this block to be mined. So to do that, let's go over here to this transaction, click on the little gear, and then click on Show an Explorer. And that will pull up our Zell Explorer. And right now, since it's unconfirmed, we're still waiting for that to go through. All right. And notice that the uh, OP return transaction has our little special message in it. Uh, this is basically what's going to tell the Zelle node that this is okay to go through. So as soon as this gets approved, it's going to go ahead and flip a switch on Flux to enable that app. Zellcore has a check mark. That's a good sign, guys. Once the confirmation is done, it automatically installs the application on Flux, and we can see it here under the running tab, Dibby Fetch. 
And if you want to take a look at it, you just click on the visit button here. And what I'd like to do is show you the official page, which is markets.dibbyfetch.com. And this is where you can see all of the assets that are covered by Dibby Fetch. And certainly more to come. Uh, we also have a little API usage section here to explain how this can be incorporated into other applications. So really cool stuff here. And all of this is running on the Flux network. And that's how you register and install an application on Flux. Now you can do this with pretty much any container on Docker Hub. So if you can Dockerize it, you can run it on Flux. I hope this video was helpful. If so, please give me a thumbs up and let us know down in the comments below. Are you a developer? Are you gonna be giving Zelle a try? And what do you wanna run on the Zelle network? Love to hear from you down below. In the meantime, the application will officially launch October 10th, 2020. So until then, we should probably get a countdown timer up somewhere, but we are really looking forward to onboarding as many people as possible to take advantage of this awesome opportunity to run your apps on one of the world's largest decentralized networks. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.